Ladies and gentlemen, we are back with another video, and this time we're going to be doing some replays. Charmers versus some some of the meta. I mean, you know, as I said, I'm not super competitive. I'm in silver and gold. This, these silvers are in current season, and um, these are from the previous season and when I ended up in gold, like low gold. Um, and this is from the Duelist Cup. So I just wanted to show you guys a few replays. I mean, my deck is evolving. My Charmer's deck is evolving as, as we go. Uh, but I just wanted to show you guys uh, how it how it did against uh, Flo and Dries, uh, Swords Old Tenyi. Uh, let's get into the replays. All right. First up is Flo and Dries. I had lost a flu so many times before, um, but I always I always have to try, right? I'm not, I'm not just going to quit right away, even though this is a extremely annoying deck to beat. And I, you know, I think I got lucky here with my card draws, right? So I have Familiar Possessed, Ausa. Uh, Nefarious Archfiend, uh, Awakening of the Possessed 5 star, uh, level 5, uh, Wishcraft for Golem, Harpies, and Solemn Morning. So, Feather Duster, uh, Summon, Alsa, Then I can special summon the Nefarious Archfiend, and then I can special summon on top of that uh, Awakening of the Possessed uh, level 5 card. So I feel like I made a mistake here because um, when this is special summon, you can special summon a level 4. Uh, or lower monster from the graveyard. So I don't know why I didn't special summon the other card, but you know, it still worked out. So he draws back his field spell. Harpies, my my back row, and then get some damage. So then from the Nefarious Archfiend's Graveyard effect, I'm able to get this trap. Luckily, I draw into a Spellcaster. So I, I, I put the Dark there to bait his attack, and it worked. As you will see here. He just went straight into attacking, and Witchcrafter goal of just, you know, carrying my deck sometimes. Um, so this could, you know, return a card to the hand um, when a Spellcaster is targeted. And I was able to chain block with this um, trap in case he had something to negate my Witchcrafter Golem. So that was a decent play by me. He banished my nefarious archfiend. But I was able to um, special summon the next card I drew. Um, and this is lethal. So there you go. That's how you beat that's how you beat Fluandries. You get lucky with the card draws. <laughs> Alright, on to the next one. So here you go. I originally had a replay before this, a fifth one, but I took it out because it was just a stall deck. It wasn't that interesting. So, probably this opponent um, bricking on his first turn helped me out. Um, but I'll show you what happened anyway. So, uh, you know, I have a decent hand here. Uh, when the wind charmer which I took out of my deck 
Um, but I didn't dismantle her. I, I because I'm creating a, a ritual beast deck later on. But I got uh, a familiar possessed dark, uh, a level five wind charmer, a dogmatic of Lord Elise, Iris Sword Soul, unpossessed, and possessed partnership. You know, pretty decent hand. But you know, they don't have any monsters on the board. So I'm able to bring in just dark and the two traps. And I can't attack this turn. So this is a blue eyes deck. Let's see. Oh, evil swarm. Oh, it is a blue eyes. So he's able to get rid of my back uh, my back row. Um, but I'm able to special summon. Um, a monster with the with the trap card. So I'm able to reduce the damage that he does. So these trap cards mess me up, but I'll show you. It's like a blue eyes trap card player. I guess is the. So I I had no monster, so I had, I ran my ghost spell in defense. Um, and because of um, my other trap card, I was able to uh, special summon Incredible Ecclesia. And Incredible Ecclesia in defense position, as long as he's not negated, works. Because on my turn, I was able to bring out Iris Sword Soul, and I just kind of sit on this. I don't mind sitting on Iris Sword Soul. So I had Butchcrafter, Golem in the hand, as usual, brings his card back, but yeah, he has a So E to the Sun Magician, which I'm not actually playing anymore, I took her out of the deck, because um, she can special summon a spellcaster, but it's too slow, you know. They, they, they're special summoned in defense position and just, you know, doesn't help the deck, our deck which is already slow as a Charmer's deck. So he gets Blue Eyes back on board, I'm able to bring in... Okay, so the only useful thing about Ida there, I, I will say, is with Ida already there, um, and this continuous trap running. Um, if a monster you control is destroyed by a battle, but you know, that could be any spell card. But Ida helped because Ida special summoned um, Familiar Possessed Lina, and then I was able to um, um, special summon a spellcaster with 1500 defense, which was uh, area. And pop this. Uh, oh no. They have to be face up. These two cards have to be face up to pop a card. So. Do I do it this time? Oh. So forget I said that. <laughs> Alright, I gotta slow down here. Um, I brought out <clears throat> I brought out Lina, right? And I normal summoned. I normal summoned Lina, and I was able to special summon Dogmatic of the Lord Ladies. And. You know, I'm afraid of his back row here, so I'm link climbing to access code. Get rid of his back row, which is again a mirror force. I don't know how he got two or three mirror forces in a row. Just two. Um, but... 
Does he stick around? I think he sticks around for his draw. Let's video. So that was Blue Eyes Trap. Blue Eyes Control. Alright. On to the next one. So this is another evolution of my deck with uh, Magical Mallet. Because I had no uh, crafting resources and I just needed a draw card. And This was okay, but... Uh, too slow. So, uh, another blue eyes, and he tried to use trade in, and I asked that. First time I had Ash in like so many games. A lot of blue eyes players. A lot of more new eyes. Blue Eyes players because uh, there's new support for it too. The Jet Dragon and there's another card. I use Hot to pick up Ecclesia. So I special summon Ecclesia, which tribute summons for uh, Iris. I, I like sitting on Iris. Use it for effects. Get some damage in. Oh, so it says it cannot attack. So he targeted Iris, so she cannot attack while the card is face up. So he suicides to bring out his blue eyes. Alternative dragon. And then since he special summoned blue eyes alternative, I was able to bring in uh, Astrograph, which I don't run in this deck anymore. I just love his animation. Uh, so there you go. So he he was able to, to pop my iris um, and increase the strength of his blue eyes uh, white dragon alternative. I really thought yeah this is alternative, um, but I still have some plays, especially with the kaiju. That's why kaiju. Bring it in my win. I get another card. I bring in the Gigabyte. So good, good draws definitely contribute to the W. Yeah. So I pop that, and then that's it. So there's a blue eyes player. Let's get to the last replay. Now this is my favorite replay. This this is the most recent. This is um, my latest, um, you know, iteration template of my deck, um, which is at 42 cards. I'm I think I'm at 41 now because I took out another card <laughs> from my deck. But basically, I have a Sky Striker engine in here. Which I fall back on, you know, if, if I'm breaking or I have no plays. Uh, and I just put in Nibiru, which is excellent. And I, you know, was able to draw it. So this really saved me in this match. So he max sees instead of ashing, which is excellent. So I'm able to make my plays. So I get my awakening card, I get the possessed trap. And I bring in area. And I'm able to draw Monster Reborn, which comes in clutch in this match as well. You'll see. So we're playing Sword Soul together. So, so this is why this is like my favorite match, because I beat Sword Soul. Obviously, this player isn't that great, like I said. This is High Silver. Uh, you know. He only puts he only puts out one synchro. Which is 
doesn't. This synchro doesn't even have a negate. If a card is banished, you could banish a card. So, and it's not even a quick effect. So, I wasn't really scared of uh, Cheng Ying. The Cheng Ying is. Cheng Ying is strong when you have another synchro to feed off the banishing effect. Um, I don't know why he paid 3,000 to special summon this. That, like, you know, that right, you know, made it a lot easier for me to uh, win this match. And he's running Red Rose Dragon for whatever reason. Um, so, yeah, this deck isn't that great. <laughs> now that I'm looking at it, it's it's Sword Soul Tenyi. I mean, I saw some Tenyi cards. It'll, yeah, see? Like, there's Tenyi Vishuda. So, he is running Sword Soul Tenyi, but I don't know what he's doing with these cards in this deck. Anyway. So, I'm able to Nibiru him in the middle of this combo. Then, he banishes my... monster which is okay decent play and then he pops my uh, spell which doesn't even matter because he lost his um, Chengi so I banish my trap and I'm able to bring back uh, the unpossessed trap so this is where the monster reward I'm able to to link off here. <laughs> I use Jing Ying just for fun. Um, and you know, luckily he has light monsters in his grave. And you know where this is going. I mean Awakening the Possessed gives me a, a monster, so that actually comes in clutch also. Because um, I did not have a spellcaster in the grave, as far as I understand. Yeah, I did not have a spellcaster monster in the grave. Firstly, the summon, so it all worked out. I, I had just enough material to make this work. So access code, and you know that's game. Lots of token. So there you go. That's how Charmers beat Sword Soul Tangy. I didn't even need to use my Sky Striker engine to beat this. But uh, I hope to show you more gameplay or you know deck profiles in the future. Uh, but have a nice one. Take care.